Hi, today I'm going to show you how to rotate counters. Uh, so, as you know with counters, or as you might know, you can't rotate a counter in the same way you can rotate an active. With an active you can rotate it right here, with the ang set angle function, but uh, the counters doesn't have that. So, in order to rotate the counter, we have to use the shader. So I'm going to use this uh, active object here to store some values. So I'll call this value holder. This needs three values. The first one is spacing. This will be the space between uh, each counters because we will have three different counters. The second will be X position. This will be the starting X position of the counters. And then we have Y position. And this will be the starting Y position of the counters. So how we're going to use uh, how we're going to rotate the counters is by using a shader. I will put the link in the description of how you can get this uh, shader here. So it's uh, Loki's rotate and subpixel positioning. So this uh, effect parameter here, the, uh, it will rotate the animation of the uh, counter. Uh, so if I just show you what uh, happens if I just uh, use one counter and rotate it, uh, you'll see that it's not really good. So we have to use multiple uh, counters. So I'll set the effect parameter to FA. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you uh, what happens if uh, you don't use multiple counters. So I'll set the effect parameter to its effect parameter plus one and I'm adding one to the counter. So when it exceeds 10, it will get uh, two decimals. So now it's rotating, but uh, you can see they're not lined up uh, in the way that we would like to have them lined up. So we have to use multiple counters. Uh, I'm just going to delete this and we'll add some more counters. First, we want a qualifier for this to make it a bit easier. And then we'll clone three times, or two times rather. So we have counter one, two, and three. And then we want to start a for each loop on the uh, qualifier of these objects, counters. So we'll call this uh, place counters. Counters. <laughs> Have to do it right. So on the loop, place counters. We will uh, set the position x to. Uh, this is where we use the value holder because counters can't hold any values other than uh, what they're used for. So we have to use another object for it. <coughs> or use global values. You can do that as well, but it's better to just have an active. Uh, so we'll set the x position to the starting x position minus cosine of Remember the parameter that I showed earlier? Uh, the parameter of FA. And multiply this by the loop index. And multiply this by the spacing. And, and the uh, brackets here. We can copy this because we're going to do almost exactly 
almost the exact same thing for the Y coordinate. So just paste it in, use the Y position, and instead of minus cosine, use plus sine. So now if I give some values to this, uh, starting value 100, 140, whatever, and I'll set this to 15. You can do whatever you want, but uh, if, uh, if you have too small of a value, the counters will overlap, like this. So I'm going to use 15, I think that's a good number. Uh, <coughs> and let's add to the counter. So if uh, I'm just adding to this counter here, the first one, then it will overlap the other counters. So we have to make this go to a maximum value of 9 and then we want to set it back to 0 and uh, this one will get another, uh, we will add one to this counter. So we'll say that when this first counter is uh, greater or equal to 10 that's when it gets two decimals. We want to subtract 10 from it. And then we want to add one to the next counter. So this way, if I'm adding three, actually I'll demonstrate it by a button press instead. So we can see it in action. Then we'll su subtract three and add one, uh, 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 subtract 10 and add one. So we will have three, six, nine, and uh, then we will uh, subtract 10, so we will get two afterwards. Instead of setting this to zero, it would uh, be, uh, not, it, it wouldn't be correct. So now we have nine and 12, so it's uh, correct. So we'll do the same with the second counter and just subtract 10 here and add to the next. Of course you could use it as many counters as you want, uh, depending on how big of a number you want. If, you're, if you think you will exceed a thousand values, uh, then, or a, a thousand, like uh, three decimals, then you would have use you ha would have to add more counters because uh, uh, if not it would be uh, the rotation would uh, look funny like I showed you earlier so now we will always add one to the first counter you can see it looks like a normal counter but in fact it's three counters there Let's add the rotation. When we hold the right arrow, uh, we want to change the parameter of the counters. The reason I'm writing the FA on the effect parameter here is because that's what is inside the brackets here. That's how you change the effect parameters. So if I wanted to change the center X, I would write FX. If I wanted to change the Y shift, I would have to write F S Y. So let's rotate this. When I'm holding the right arrow, we want to uh, set the effect parameters of F A, which is the, the angle parameter, to its uh, effect parameter F A, and subtract one. We'll do the same for the left arrow, except uh, we will add one instead. So now I can rotate it. Uh, I'm going to hold in the right arrow, the left arrow. So I think this is the only way to rotate counters. Uh, and it looks okay. So now, since I exceed Since uh, 
I got over a thousand values, then the third one is looking funny. So if I would think I need more values than this, then I would have to add another counter. And that's simple, you just clone the last one. And copy this, change the counter 1 and 2 to counter 3 instead, and move it uh, and do the same for the next counter. So now, when this goes up to 10, it will add 1 to this counter instead, and it won't look funny. Just like that. So that's everything, I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.